as I did push start. Okay, five, four. Hello and welcome everyone to Denver International Airport's first ever public artwork webinar. So we are very excited to be here today to share some really great information with you and showcase one of our newest artists coming to the airport. Next slide. So right now we want to give you a quick overview of how art fits into the context at Denver International Airport. Last year, we established a new strategic plan called Vision 100 as we are preparing for a hundred million passengers in the next eight to 10 years. So as part of this, we really focus on every project we do. How does it fit into this and how does it help us support this growth? And for this one in particular, because we are growing so much, we believe that public art is an important part of our customer experience. It also has a lot to do with equity, diversity and inclusion and overall our stakeholders and i'm going to talk to you about why stakeholders matter uh, on the next slide the public art ordinance and policy is what governs public art at denver and within the city this was established in 1988 by then mayor federico pena and basically what it is is that any capital improvement project with a budget of one million dollars or more we set aside one percent of that to build new public art. At the airport, it's hard because we, our facility is only so big. So what happens is we end up banking those funds to be able to do larger public artworks across the airport campus. That includes both in the airport itself, but also in the facility along Pena Boulevard, all these other locations. We have a public art master plan that governs where this art is going to go. So in this particular, project, it generated $17 million in public art dollars. We're not spending it all on this project, but this is the total amount that's going to be put into new public art. And I should also mention, DEN is not a taxpayer funded organization. The airport is not. We generate our funds on site through when you park, where you eat, all of those types of things. And that's what pays for the public art here at the airport. Next slide. So the public art selection process. So what happens for each individual site, we or site or project, we convene a selection panel. We work with arts and venues downtown and we look at getting a very diverse panel that includes people from the community, arts professionals, people from the airport, people from the business community, people from tourism, whatever that looks like that makes sense for each individual panel. On this panel, there were 12 different members that helped us select the art. The other part of it is our equity, diversity, inclusion and accessibility commitment ensures that the panel consists of a 51% majority of historically marginalized communities. So it might be the BIPOC community, LGBTQ+, accessibility, whatever that looks like. We really work hard to try to get diverse panels and 72% of this selection panel for this program was comprised of those individuals, something we're very proud of. We then issue a request for qualifications, and so we had more than 300 artists submit their requests for qualifications to be considered, and then the panel narrows that down to semifinalists and finalists. And so through this, um, they selected the top artists. So as the artists come together, they submit their concepts, they really work on refining them so that they are site specific and unique to the specific space. And then ultimately, once we have a selected concept and a selected artist, this goes now to through a whole process through the uh, Commission for Cultural Affairs. It then goes to the mayor's office and then ultimately to Denver City Council if it meets a certain dollar threshold. So this art that we have selected now is going into our gate expansion program. So if for anyone who's been at the airport in a while, you'll see that we have been adding gates on the end of every concourse. So in particular, this project is a $2.3 billion program that has added 39 new gates. That's a 30% capacity increase in gates at this airport. You'll see these spaces, they're light and airy. That's what you're seeing in the photos right now. Um, very bright, very open. There's a lot of passenger amenities, great new seating, outdoor patios, new restrooms, uh, nursing mother rooms, um, pet relief rooms, everything that you need for a modern traveler. 
But what it is missing is art. And this is where we've been building. So you can see the gates that have been being added on the end of each concourse. You see concourse uh, A, we added on A West, and you'll hear about some of these other artworks to come soon because we hope to do similar webinars. Concourse B West and Concourse C East, but we're here to talk to you today about Concourse B East, which is where this particular piece is going. So you can see the rendering. When we were expanding on Concourse B East, take a look here at what this looks like. So this was what we were planning for and what the future state was going to look like. So um, this is the new expanded area on the picture on the left, on the one on the right. This is the area now that we realize there is a great opportunity to bring people down to the end of the concourse and draw them there with a gorgeous public art piece. So when we go out for our call, this is what we identified. We want something to go right here in this location. Next slide. And with that, now I'm very excited to introduce the selected artist that might be familiar to many of you because he is a Colorado guy. Uh, Thomas Detour Evans is from Aurora, but he you will see his murals everywhere. Aurora, Boulder, Inglewood, Denver, you see his you see his work. But we're so excited because this is going to be a large scale 3D piece and this is unique to the airport and something I believe his first one, first 3D piece of this side. And I um, would have told you a little bit about the piece, but I am not going to because he has the best story to tell of how he has concepted this. And so I'm going to turn it up over to Thomas and let him tell the story of this gorgeous piece that's going to be joining our airport. Thomas? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, Stacey, and the, the rest of DIA. Um, super, super excited to be here. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess I really want to sort of tell you all about the concept and then the story behind the concept. Uh, for those that don't know me, uh, I put together like a couple slides at the beginning that just showcases the murals that I do because that is what most people around uh, Denver and part of the nation uh, really know me for is like I do a ton of colorful bright and bold uh, portraiture sort of murals and figurative work. I've done it in Denver. Um, these two on the left are recent ones that I did uh, middle to late last year at my alma mater uh, downtown Auraria campus at uh, the University of Colorado Denver. So those were super exciting, uh, painting some of my fellow alumni as well. And then the one on the right is one I did in West Dallas uh, in Wisconsin, right beside Milwaukee. So I do a ton of murals around town. So it was super exciting uh, to sort of apply for this call for, from DIA and to try to venture into getting into 3D art because I'm used to doing 2D art on a large scale. So getting into 3D art was something that I really, really wanted to do. So hopefully you'll like the presentation today uh, in terms of how I'm transitioning into the space of 3D art and sort of like what this is going to be. So, um, so let me actually give you a little bit of background on this next slide and really just tell you about some of the why I made some of the decisions that I did make when coming up with the, this design. I'm a military brat, so my dad went to West Point, so I grew up moving every three to five years, so pretty much everywhere around the world and then uh, really getting used to airports and then getting used to planes and you know just traveling everywhere. So I'm used to sort of like carrying everything in my bag and in my luggage. So when I took my background and those experiences and tried to apply that to the artist call that DA had, I spent about three months of just like trying to develop an idea that was really unique and really just like talked about the, I guess, some of the, the goals that they wanted to have in terms of having this uh, art piece in, in DIA. And some of those things that sort of uh, I was trying to tackle with was, you know, a piece that was commanding. I love I loved to do big uh, 2D murals and how do I translate that into 3D work? So I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to be commanding and bold. I wanted to make sure I added uh, a sense of contrast and sort of wonderment and landmark and make, make it to where it was sort of like my big blue bear at the airport. So something that was also shareable because, you know, the kids today, they love to share stuff. Any, anyone in general just love to share stuff because uh, they just love to sort of uh, 
uh, show people where they're at. So I wanted to make a piece where, you know, you felt great about taking a picture of it, being in front of it and sharing it with people. Um, so that was sort of like the idea that I sort of went into it with and combining that with a lot of the experiences that I've had traveling and, you know, with the artwork, you can kind of see some of the sketches of what I was thinking about. And then really, um, at the end of the day, I started honing in on the idea of of luggage and the idea of the things that we sort of uh, use to carry other valuable items around with us. So I started sketching this idea in the top right, as you can see, of like these luggage kind of put together and really just started honing in on that and wanted to sort of get uh, a sample sort of done to sort of see it in real life. So on the next slide, you can kind of see where I went to arcs around uh, around Aurora and then went to uh, Goodwill downtown off of uh, Broadway in Denver and started grabbing, you know, all these loose uh, suitcases and, you know, luggage and bags and wanted to see exactly what this idea would look like in real life. So on the next slide, I'm in my studio working on putting these, this idea together and seeing how it would look as a small sample. So you can kind of see, hopefully the video is going, you can kind of see me uh, working on this idea uh, with these different pieces of luggage and bags that I gathered from, you know, the thrift store and putting them together in a way that was really interesting to me, uh, but really just like I wanted to see this proof of concept, whether it would work or not, and what it would feel like, you know, to sort of be up close on it. And really the, like this next slide, when I have everything sort of finished, you can kind of see uh, what it looked like put together. So in my studio, I was thinking about the idea when it came to this concept of scale, how, can this scale up to be even larger and to be formed into different shapes? You know, the idea of color, how do I sort of color this and make it sort of um, uh, a transition from my 2D work that's super colorful, colorful to a 3D piece that's super colorful, but cohesive as well. So the idea of color and the idea of volume as well. On the next slide, you can sort of like see the video of me walking around it a little bit. And so how would this sort of scale up and how would it this how would this sort of uh, tackle the idea of volume of making it feel like it was bigger than life in that sort of space at uh, Concourse B East? And then also too, one of the main things I wanted to do was make it relatable as well. And because a lot of the work that I do ties with community, um, because I'm all about community, I'm all about, you know, you know, making sure that the people in the neighborhood, especially when it comes to public art, are, are able to relate to it. So how do I make it relatable? And that's why I really wanted to sort of focus out on luggage because that's something that we all have in common. Um, so really in the end, it came out to be the piece that I'm about to show you right now on the next slide, a piece called, it's not what you take, it's what you bring back. And it's basically, a collection of upcycled luggage and items put together to create a sense of infinite motion. And it just really talks about the common journey we have in life and the items that we take with us. And it's not only bold on a macro level, because when you see it for the first time, you're going to be at the beginning of that moving body escalator, escalator walking to your gate. But when you walk close to it, it's going to change and be interesting on a micro level as well. And I think we got this video playing as well. So I did a 3D rendering so that people could see what it would look like and feel like as they walk around. And so on a macro level, it feels like this uh, infinity shape um, at the beginning. And then when you get closer, you see it, it loops. It has a looping shape and you're walking underneath it and you're sort of discovering all these different items and all these different uh, pieces of luggage and different bags and everything is going to be upcycled so every angle is going to be different and interesting in, in many ways and i uh for the presentation i did a 3d rendering and i put myself in there so that was super exciting because i never do that for 2d mural uh, proposals or anything but 3d art is like i have to figure out a way to sort of put uh uh put this idea from that's abstract in my head into reality. So we did these th these 3D models and I threw myself in there. So that was really fun feeling like I was in a video game. But um, on the next slide, 
let's get more into some of the details about this piece. Um, I titled it, it's not what you take, it's what you bring back, uh, because in the end, like when we talk about luggage, the space in our luggage is sort of like currency. It's sort of like object real estate. So, you know, when you're traveling to a place, you, you bring the things that you think you need, that you want, um, to that destination. And then when you gain experience and you grow and you sort of learn something from traveling from that destination, the things that you bring back are some a lot of times going to be different because we want to sort of bring some of the things that we uh, gathered throughout the travel, throughout that experience with us. And that's where it becomes, you know, space in a piece of luggage becomes very valuable because I'm I've left many sneakers in many places. I had to triple, sometimes do five layers of coats and shirts just to make sure I had space in my luggage. So the idea of space and luggage for me was super important. So uh, the stuff that we have in there, uh, we really, really, truly hold valuable. And that's one thing I, I think we all have in common when we travel through a place like DIA. So that's where I was really sort of trying to hone in on this uh, piece and, you know, the idea of having that piece of luggage sort of like uh, in this infinite loop was something that I really wanted to sort of emphasize as well. And getting into the shape, because I know a lot of people are interested about that, it's really inspired by the idea of this 24 hour nature of DIA and airports and just traveling and planes in general. There's always a plane in the sky. And that's sometimes crazy to think about is like, there's always someone traveling at, you know, at a fast pace in the sky around the world and airports usually they just never close because there's always planes in the sky um and for me that was really really interesting so that's why i had this idea of having like this infinity shape which is basically just a math symbol talking about it's never ending so that's what i really wanted to hone in on uh when you're sort of far away and then when you get closer you see that it has this looping shape um, and it feels like a roller coaster as well, but it also emphasizes or sort of references the idea of takeoff and landing. So like you're landing in the day and you're taking off at night and taking off at night and landing in the day uh, with the changing colors. So that's something that I really uh, loved about this shape. And that's what, what I really think people will sort of uh, get from it when, when they sort of view it and, and experience it. Uh, the overall size of this piece is going to be around 27 uh, by 10 feet by 12 feet. Um, and it varies just a little bit depending on the type of luggage that we get and how far we expand it. And then there's going to be items that also talk about Colorado floating around the, the piece as well. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, but also about the color on this next slide, the colors are influenced by the idea of sunrise and sunset. And it also references 24, that idea of 24 seven, that never ending because, you know, there's always a sunrise, there's always a sunset because, you know, the earth is always rotating around the sun and we're always sort of experiencing that. So, and especially in Colorado where we're, all about outdoors and all about nature and all about getting outside. I really want to hone in on the idea of that sunrise sunset because we have a lot of sun. I think we we have all different seasons, um, but we also have a lot of sun, which is very unique about Colorado and especially Denver uh, at this altitude. And there's going to be about 13 different steps of color on the actual piece in each bag in each item will have a solid color, but you can kind of see that transition as it goes from dark blue to lighter blue to a powdery sort of uh, yellow to orange and red. That transition from sunrise, sunset, and that loop, it just never ends, never ends, never ends. And that's what I really, really like uh, about this piece and about the shape. And I think other people will like it as well, because I wanted to make sure every uh, decision that I uh, made for this piece from the color to the shape is really just referencing Colorado DIA travel and really just talks about the personality of the history and just uh, all about Colorado. Um, the next slide will go in deeper into um, the different items and the luggage. So this piece is going to be upcycled. So all the luggage and items will be sourced locally because I want all the items and luggage to really hone in on the history and personality of Colorado and talk about 
who we are and how rich we are in terms of, you know, just history and personality. So getting the bags from friends, family, uh, community members, um, basically having uh, stories uh, through the bag talk about, you know, everything from Samsonite and Scarpa or Topo who are based in, who are either starting in Colorado or are based in Colorado, so like businesses or schools at all different levels, talking about everything from University of Colorado to, you know, community college in Grand Junction or, you know, could be any um, school at any level. And then also talking about organizations, talking about things like, you know, the, the X Games that we have in the mountains or, you know, the military community that we have. So, you know, all the different bags that we have that we collect from people will have a different story tied to it. So then you're able to learn, oh, this is Buckley Air Force Base, or this is, you know, the history of the Tuskegee Airmen in Colorado, or this is the history of the Olympic Training Center uh, that we have in Colorado Springs. So all these different little items, I think, uh, can really uh, lean into teaching other people and just other people in Colorado more about Colorado. And that's why the documentation and the prominence uh, of each sort of piece is going to be important to the story of this piece of artwork. Um, and then on the next slide, you can kind of see as I gather the, the different bags and luggage, we're going to talk about uh, the donation form later, but as I gather the bags and luggage and work with a uh, fabrication team, we're going to make sure we prep the bags and uh, make it as light as possible and prep it for uh, the armature. So we're going to coat it and then we're going to color it and coat it again. So we're going to take those bags and sort of just transform it to be a building block for this actual uh, piece uh, so that, you know, when you're seeing the entire piece, it's made up of upcycled items from people that you may know from yourself and you feel good about that. Um, not only that, like I said, I'm going to have uh, items floating around it on the next slide. And these items will also be sourced uh, locally as well. And some of them I'll have to fabricate. Um, so like most likely like a shoe talking about the Boulder Boulder Marathon, because I know that's a popular marathon. And I really want to have like a running shoe in there uh, talking about that. Uh, but, you know, probably getting a cast of the shoe or, you know, uh, a cast of the volleyball from a local school. So that's something that I'm going to do as well. So that every piece, like I said, in here has a reference to to Colorado. And then to do everything, um, I'm basically putting everything together and it will be suspended uh, from the ceiling about 12 feet from the ground. Um, I don't know if anyone can jump that high, so I think that's a safe enough height. So, so if we put the ground, we're going to have a uh, suspended armature that sort of uh, everything is attached to. So that's sort of like how it's going to look from like the top down a little bit. So just to give you a, a sense of like what it looks like from that perspective. And then to put everything together on the next slide, I have uh, next slide after that, I have the team Demerge. So Demerge is an amazing fabrication team uh, locally in Colorado. They've done quite a few things. You may have seen some of their work around town, or if you travel, they do stuff everywhere. So I have them helping me out along with uh, Mary Valdez uh, too, uh, to put everything together and to help me sort of uh, make sure this happen. So they'll help me with the fabrication, the prepping of the luggage. They're going to help me with the, uh, you know, the transportation, the installation at DIA, and then the maintenance. And really, I think this is going to uh, be a fantastic project because everyone in here is experienced and then bringing my experience in terms of the, the creative and the artistic and the community uh, part of it uh, is going to be super, super exciting. And then really where I think this piece um has a lot of legs is i think the next slide is when it comes to discovering uh the different items so like one of the things i like i said i really wanted to do is a community component and that's like making sure a lot of the bags were upcycled um as sort of the building blocks and then having other people discover it because one thing i really want is you know for for myself or for you or another family member or friends or community member to go to DIA and say, hey, this bag right here, uh, part of this art piece is my grandmother's 
or my grandfather's or it's my bag that I traveled with when I you know was in college and I did a trip to China or uh, you know Mumbai or something so it's like I really want people to discover some of those stories about Colorado and about some of those individuals uh, that uh, donated so the website is going to be important so having a, a way for people to say hey let me I have uh, a good two hour layover let me check out this piece okay let me go to this website oh I can see exactly this bag and where this bag comes from and oh I didn't know that uh, Colorado had an Olympic training center. Oh, I didn't know about the school in Colorado, but they now they know about it through the the actual website, but also giving like, you know, fun facts about the piece, giving fun uh, behind the scenes about uh, the fabrication and the, the people involved as well. So the website for me is going to be sort of like a whole nother component that I think is going to be super exciting when it comes to making sure that the, the piece is able to be uh, something that I think a lot of people can 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 relate to uh, because when you get when you see a large public art piece and it's made out of pure metal sometimes you just feel disconnected but when you have a piece like this I think you're able to learn a lot about it because you relate to it because it could have been your bag it could have been your your family member's bag or someone that you know and you're able to connect with it a lot more uh, because it's, it's a common item that we all have anyway and it's sort of has this personal story tied to it. So we're going to try to get as many uh, bags uh, for this piece uh, that is connected to sort of like a history or a prominence or a story uh, from someone in Colorado. And to do that, on the next slide, I also worked on putting together a form. So this is the, the heavy lifting before the actual heavy lifting of all the bags and armatures. And the, the link down there is the link to the JOT form where you're able to see, I put the little uh, screenshots out where you're able to see exactly what this project is about, um, put in your contact information, uh, how to reach you, where you are in Colorado. I think the city has questions in there as well they wanted to put in there, but really it's like it's showcasing exactly the bags that we want for uh, the actual sculpture and what they look like. Uh, on the next slide, I think we can zoom in on that. Uh, you're able to see the different types of bags. So, you know, all different types of bag, mostly bags that are under are around 28 inches by 18 by 10 inches and under so that we can get uh, a ton of bags on this uh, this art piece. Uh, but, you know, they, they span the gamut in terms of what they look like. So it could be those hard shell Samsonite bags or it could be the duffel bags. It could be a military bag that you use or, you know, it could be an old school sort of vintage uh, suitcase or piece of luggage that, you know, uh, an old relative had that passed away and it's just sitting in your uh, garage or basement that you want to make sure that you don't throw it away, that it's contributing uh, to the future and it's like people are able to learn more about the history of that individual. So taking those bags and I think on the next slide I have like a an image of the in between um, uh, process of like prepping some of the bags for that sample piece. So these are some of the things that I took from that uh, arcs and goodwill some of those luggage and some of my bags as well and coded it uh, and put it together and then colored it afterwards and that's sort of like one of the in-between in processes uh, that what it looks like. So all the bags um, that are going to be donated are going to be chopped up and torn apart in terms of making it as efficient as possible to be uh, a puzzle piece for for the actual art piece um, and then coded. So once you donate a bag, that's one, one thing I want to make sure uh, I have clear is that once you donate a bag, um, it will um, be it won't be able to be used afterwards. And even if you do no, donate a bag, um, it's not guaranteed that it will be a part of the piece because this piece has so many pieces um, sort of uh, comprising it. It's going to be sort of like a Tetris in terms of putting everything together. And we're just trying to collect as many bags as possible and see exactly how that puzzle piece can fit together. Um, but if you do wish to donate a, a piece of luggage because you just want to get rid of some luggage or you really want to be um, a part of this public art project that you can actually reference when you go through the airport or when someone else goes to the airport, um, you can go to this form 
and donate uh, a piece of luggage. And um, like I said, it showcases uh, the the information on the types of luggage, the size of luggage, and then I have a space for you to upload pictures of your piece of luggage and actually tell uh, a story about the piece of luggage so that we can take this information and include that into part of the website. Um, not every part of this sculpture will be tied to a specific person or have a specific story. Uh, we're trying to get as many as possible. Uh, where we need to fill in the gaps, I'll probably try to pull from my own uh, personal luggage, friends and family, but I'll also go to uh, Goodwill and Arts again to sort of figure out some of those smaller pieces that we kind of need to sort of fit this piece of that, uh, that uh, art piece. Um, but everything will be used and upcycled, so nothing new, and then everything will be sourced in Colorado. So that's one thing I really, really want to uh, hone in on is that, you know, this piece right here is something where it's kind of like it's a collection of people's you know, lives is people's stories from all over the place, and we want to make sure that we get a wide variety of, of, of pieces. So if you have a friend or a family member that you think uh, would love to be a part of this, definitely write down that link and send it to them, uh, because I want to try to get as many as possible to sort of sort through and like select from. Um, and we, like I said, we just really want to make sure uh, from north to south to east to west, west uh, that you know everyone feels like they they had a part into it so that when you go to do dia you're you're able to say oh this is a really fun art piece it's cool i love to take pictures of in front of it i want to do a tiktok video if you guys do tiktok videos i don't but if you guys want to do tiktok videos in front of it but at the same time say hey this is something that it's not made of you know uh, some other raw material this is actually people's personal bags and there's a story tied to it and it's all about community. So that's my sort of, uh, uh, I guess, venture uh, into translating a lot of my 2D work and community work and sort of like my sort of past practice into this future opportunity to tr try to make DIA as fun as possible, as exciting as possible as you're traveling, you know how hard travel is. So I want to make sure that you're enjoying the artwork in there and saying, hey, this is uh, this is really fun because DIA, I think, is one of the busiest airports in the world. Um, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a chaotic place, but it's like we can make it as fun and enjoyable as possible. And I think art is a perfect way of doing that. And I want to make sure I'm a part of that, but I also want to make sure that you are a part of that as well. So hopefully you like the presentation and sort of like my explanation about, you know, how to get involved and, you know, the reasoning behind some of the decisions of why it looks the way it looks and the colors and, you know, all these different things uh, that you kind of see in my piece. Hopefully I didn't talk too long. <laughs> no. OK. Um, I'm not sure if I'm live back on here yet, so we will see. Um, what we want to talk about now is open this up for questions. As many of you can see, we have a great um, trail here of some comments and some questions. So please, if you have questions, for Thomas, throw these in the chat so that we can ask him some of these great questions. First, I would say, Thomas, like I, I think what I can see from reading the comments we've gotten is everyone, just like the selection panel was, is completely blown away by your piece. Like you're, you're seeing comments like, "Wow, this is so cool! Love the colors, beautiful! Love this and the thoughts behind it! Amazing! So much movement! Love it! Amazing! Very cool! Love it!" <laughs> so, um. So I don't see anyone in, on here saying, oh gosh, wish you would have chose something else. So I think yeah. we can say unanimously, there is no question that you were the right artist to create um, this beautiful piece in this space. And it's perfect for the space. Yeah, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking in the comment section right now and, you know, it seems like the people are really uh, into trying to tell some, some very stories. Like I see one about the, Colorado Japanese American internment camps. I see one from the avalanche. So yeah, I think if people have um, connections to help me out in terms of telling those stories, send the links to some of those individuals or try to connect me with them. 
And I think that's a great way of like making sure that those stories are, are told. So I love to figure out, like I said, like this Colorado Japanese American internment camps, getting some some of those stories in there. Colorado Avalanche, I'd love to do that as well. I think we won the championship uh, last year or the year before. Uh, but it's like I really, really want to make sure that uh, everyone has a, a, an opportunity to, to be a part of this. Absolutely. So uh, I have a question for you, Thomas, as you've been talking about this. So um, go back to you as an artist and your experience, you know, being a military brat, right? H how did you get into art? How did this all shape you as the artist that you are today? Well, I mean, moving every three to five years, like you can kind of see me small right there. That's in Fort Lee, Virginia, but moving a lot, you have to figure out how to adapt and how to make friends. And artwork was a way of me making friends. So I drew my friends. I drew the people that I would meet whatever place I would go to. And that was a way of like starting a conversation or connecting with someone because, you know, I was I was fairly good at drawing anyway. And when you're, you know, you're in third grade and someone sees you draw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and it's cool, they want to be your friend. So it's kind of like that continued over and over and over. And the more I do it, I did that, the better I got and the more I just leaned into it. And then it became, you know, I'm I'm the artist wherever I go. And that was uh, a fun sort of just like experience for me throughout my life is like being able to express myself creatively, but connect with people creatively as well. And that's like, I think why I'm so big on community and sort of connecting with people. Uh, yeah, that's great. Um. There's some qu some questions here in the chat that I want to throw out to make sure we get answered. Um, one question, does the donor get notified if his or her item is included in the project? Yeah, so as 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 we're collecting bags, that's when, you know, we're notifying you notifying you that hey, we would love to uh, figure out how to get your bag and add it to the piece. Um, but then if it does get included into the actual sculpture, uh, yes, we'll definitely notify you because that's something where it's kind of like I want to make sure um, that story or at least your name is a part of the website or part of being recognized, hey, this is this individual's bag and this is where we got it from. So I want to make sure uh, that you guys are given credit for for donating. Good, thank you. So here's a question. What's your favorite thing about the airport? Ooh, for me, I, I, was, I don't know. I think I like to get to the airport and just hang out because it's like people watching. I, I, I never felt, if it's like I'm, I'm six foot tall, but when I go to the airports, I see really tall people because they're from every walk of life. Or they're from everywhere. And when I travel internationally, it's like just seeing people that are just vastly different from me and just exploring, you know, the different, you know, customs and cultures and things like that. But just like seeing what everyone looks like in real life because i've seen people who are like seven feet tall at airports and i'm like i've never seen that other than like a basketball game uh so really just like seeing all different uh individuals in airports and languages and stuff like that as i travel internationally um but like dia because it's so busy it's like you can get that at this local airport so that's always fun to have yeah yeah definitely what you know one of the things that really stood out to me is um, when you talked about the luggage being in an in infinite, infinite loop and how that sort of infinity means so many things when it with regard to the airport, and with regard to travel, and you even said it sort of looks like a roller coaster, which I think we all know is appropriate when you travel a lot, right? Because you've got your ups and downs for sure. Um, what about you as you've been traveling? What's your favorite travel destination and why? Um, I would say I've been I'm trying to go back to Buenos Aires, Argentina pretty often um, because I just have a lot of art friends out there. And then another place um, that I want to go back to is Tanzania and a place called Orqueswa. And that's like another destination because I did volunteer work out there for about seven, eight months. And that was like a, a very pivotal part of my life. And for me, it's like just tra traveling is a roller coaster. Uh, every new place is like a new challenge. So there's ups and there's downs and there's ups and there's more downs. And then 
you know, you can't find your luggage, so that's it down. And then when you find it, it's an up. And then, you know, so it's it's always fun for me to travel uh, different places. But those are two places where I'm like, I, I'm always super excited to go to. Okay, thanks. A couple more comments from the chat. One person said, um, perfect name, so well thought out. So for the donation list, they think it's a great idea and said, perhaps somehow we could tie in the donating luggage on the side for foster kids. I'm going to throw that out as a suggestion. Um, another suggestion in here was, could we have a small art station near this piece of art for our younger travelers, coloring sheets or something like that? Mm. So something to think about there as well. Um, definitely on behalf of the airport, I think we're open to ideas, so we yeah. will be exploring some of these. Um, there was a compliment that you gave a great commencement speech at CU Denver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did that uh, last year. I was like the first time they had a commencement in person since uh, the COVID mm -hmm. stuff, and that was that was nerve wracking, but it was uh, it was super super fun for me. And connecting back with uh, the university, my alma mater, was super fun. So getting bags from them, so that was uh, a great opportunity to tell them about the the project and say, hey. We need some of your bags as well. Uh, someone had a a comment or they wanted to know what Demerge was and they're a fabrication company. So they do a lot of public art uh, fabrication and they're they're about, about five miles away from me and they do a ton of great work. So that's why I reached out to them. So that's uh, Demerge, a fabrication company. Yeah, great. Well, I think the big question that everyone wants to know about is how long do you think it's going to take to build this? When will it be installed and when are we going to see this at the airport? Yeah, so right now is like the official launch of the link for the form donation form. So getting that out there and then collecting all the bags will be over the next half year, I would say, until we get into the final design stage is approved. And then once that is approved, that's when I can go into full production of actually uh, fabricating everything. Um, so that will take a good bit, but I believe probably it's safe to say mid 2025 is sort of like the goal of, of having this piece up and viewable um, at DIA at uh, Concourse B East. Um, so hopefully mid to late 2025, you'll see it up there. Um, but it's a long process and I want to make sure I, you know, I dot my I's, I cross my T's when it comes to making sure that, you know, the community feels represented in this piece um, or has an opportunity to. Um, so I want to make sure that I have a good amount of time to talk to people and collect as many different items as possible. Yeah, good. There was another comment about some climbing gear because Colorado is huge for rock climbing. And then another story about you. What's the story behind the name Detour? Uh, so Detour actually comes from a breakdance VHS tapes. So VHF, VHS tapes. Um, oh, that, I, feel, I feel dated now. So yeah, so I used to break dance a, like a, I wouldn't say a long time ago. I, uh, it was like a part of my life and amazing part of my life where I learned a lot. And that's also how I made friends as I was, you know, moving from place to place because dance is a universal language. And one of my favorite um, dance crews were from the Bay Area in California and they were called Originality Stands Alone and they made a VHS tape. Um, so like a highlight tape of their their ventures and they uh, put it out there and this is like me in high school looking at the website when you know it was like a early days of kind of websites and I ordered it and I was living in Germany at the time too so it took about a month and a half to get to me and once I got it now I, I love the idea of the name or the word detour and it was like a, a it was when I was also getting into airbrushing um, t-shirts, airbrushing t-shirts and getting into like putting my work out there to the public as well. And, you know, putting Thomas Evans at the bottom of, you know, a cool t-shirt was like, <laughs> I don't want to, I want, I want to have a cool, cool name. So I was like, let me just use that word detour. So I used that since probably 2000 and probably, probably about 2000, uh, the year 2000, 2001. That's when I started using it and kind of just uh, stayed ever since. 
Oh, that's good. That's a good story. Maybe we could get a demonstration when we um, cut the ribbon and unveil your piece of your great uh, breaking. <laughs> yeah, I, be fun. I may have to break dance in front of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, here's a good question. Do you have any idea of how many bags you might use for this installation? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I I have no idea. I mean, there was a lot of bags in that sample, but that sample uh, piece that you saw, uh, basically it was only three fourths full. I didn't do the other side. Uh, so, you know, that was a lot of bags right there. So I kind of just, I think it just depends on the size of each bag that we uh, put on there, but that's like the the that's the question of the day is like how many bags do I need? So really, it's all about getting as many bags as possible, and then trying to create that sort of the base structure of the armature, and see exactly you know how do we fill it up with more donations and bags. So it's going to be different because every bag is going to be different, um, and seeing exactly what is donated. So that is that is one. Of, that's going to be one of those Snapple facts that you find under a Snapple cap. <laughs> you say, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, so that's that's a question that I, I have as well. Yeah, that's good. So, Thomas, you talk a, a little bit about color because you. I mean, that's one thing you you touched on it here that um you know it looks at the sunrise and sunset. All of your pieces that I have seen are so colorful, but blended in a really magnificent way. So how what goes into that thought process every time you pick up a paintbrush or uh, you know whatever you're doing to make you determine how to use that color palette and 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 what goes through that? Yeah, I mean, I started using color when I started doing a lot of live art. And when you're doing live art, you don't have that much time. So when I was on stage doing live art at uh, Aphelia's, it was three or four hours to match flesh tone and I couldn't do it. So I just used uh, the color out the bottle and that's where I started getting more colorful with my work. And then it just transitioned to me exploring color. And when I started doing a lot of murals and you know larger sort of um, public art, I started noticing how a lot of the architecture and just like the surrounding was muted colors. So you get browns, you get the brick colors, maroons, you get tan colors. And, you know, with all these developments popping up, it's like the same color all the time. So I started really just focusing on how can I stand out with the colors that I use and really just started exploring that in 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 my larger works and really just started getting into sort of, you know, cool color combinations like like pinks and teals always sort of work together with me or like these the red and the orange always work together and then combining some of these you know cool colors together to really make sure that any piece that I do stands out from its surrounding so that's why I really wanted to hone in on color on this piece and focus on the sunrise and set was because those colors aren't really sort of represented in the architecture, interior architecture and interior design that DIA has right now. So when, when you put that piece in there, it really just pops. And with the new uh, renovations, it feels like it's more airy. It's more, there's more light in this like, it's sort of like a, a, a white gallery box. Um, and it's now it's like the piece is going to pop even more because this, there's such a contrast with those bright bold colors. So that's where I really hone in on is like, how do I make it stand out as much as possible uh, from someone, you know, all the way down at the center of the concourse, seeing all the way down at the end of the concourse. Oh, what is that? What is that color that's standing out? It's like bold, it's bright. It's like, um, it's, there's like this uh, magnetism to it. Oh, absolutely. That I think that was one of the things that drew us to this piece. You know, the airport doesn't have a lot of color, right? We're very white yeah. with the tents and a lot of stainless steel and gray. Um, so <laughs> to be able to warm that space is going to be so incredible. I think, and what you just said is true. I think you are going to be able to see it um, all the way down, and it's going to draw people down to this new space, which is yeah. going to be fun too. Um, there's a question here about: Will you use bags inside of bags? Or what are you going to do to keep the form while mounted? Yeah, so I think uh, the merge and I are going to uh, work on getting 
uh, fire resistant sort of cushioning or foam uh, to add to those bags so it keeps the form. So over the course of years and decades, um, hopefully centuries, it can stay up there that the bags just don't sort of lose its form over time. Um, so that's the that's the goal right now. And maybe even adding an Easter egg into one of these. I don't know if you know. <laughs> Someone takes down the, the piece and they're like, oh, what is this from 2020? So it, it's like going to be it's going to be really interesting. But that's the that's the idea for right now is like putting in flame resistant um, paper cushion foam into these pieces so that the form is, is sort of kept throughout the history of the actual piece. Yeah. There's, there's some good questions coming in about this. Yeah. These um, and, you know, another thing that stood out to me that you talk a lot about is um, your ties to the community and making it relatable, which I think is so interesting and goes to how varied your pieces are, uh, you know, and how how this one is so specific to the airport as compared to some of the other pieces that you've done. When when you were concepting this piece, what was that like for you? Because it, it feels to me like this was a little out of the box, right, of your normal work what was yeah. that like yeah I mean, it, it, was, it was difficult because when i applied because you were talking about the process of public art and how you guys did it you know applying for this rfq um was something where it's kind of like i was surprised that i got on the short list um you know because i, I i'm not as experienced when it comes to um making you know 3d work and you know i'm mostly figurative work i'm mostly large-scale 2d work um so but people knew knew my reputation and knew i put together a good team that could put it together and create something that's super wonderful um uh, but they knew my work from around town so they were super excited to see like what i created because they didn't know and i didn't know at the beginning as well but when it comes to being thoughtful behind the decisions that i make it was kind of like what do i want to see when i walk through an airport and what do you know the next person uh want to see and how will they get excited so for me it was like the idea of bringing community into it was like, OK, let me figure out how to make it more so of an upcycled piece where I'm using parts of the community, but also something relatable to where it's uh, the luggage that we carry around. So it's something that everyone, regardless of what age they're, they, they are, it's like if you're you know, a little kid, you're carrying around a big backpack going to a preschool uh, with your snacks inside and lunchbox inside. If you're, you know, you're older, you're carrying bags around with you to, to travel to see grandkids, things like that. So we always have uh, this thing in common. Uh, so how do I sort of combine those pieces together? Like the initial sketches, I had like this suitcase sort of like um, open where all these items are flying out of it you know so it was like that's an idea that i had so i was throwing around a couple of different things and really as i sort of whittled down like how can i be more thoughtful behind some of the decisions and people asking questions because with public art it's open to the public everyone's able to criticize it and poke at it so i wanted to make sure that you know if someone um, looks at it and they're asking okay why is this this why is that 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 there's something thoughtful behind it that they leave saying, oh, this is this is actually really amazing. This is actually something that I can really get behind. And that's sort of like how I came up with this piece right here was, you know, something that fit the the space, it fit the environment, it fit the, you know, the the viewers and the stakeholders that were going to be sort of enjoying it. Um, and it's something that's at the intersection of what they want and what I want as well. And hopefully, you know, people will still see that see that you know 50 years from now when they sort of view it and learn more about Colorado. Uh, thanks that gets to our next comment they you know somebody mentioned please include local sports teams green chili tackle box fix tack tackle box <laughs> fishing all of these things that make Colorado so great and I I know that you could see that from the personal items that you were showing um, yeah. in addition to the bags. Gotta do gotta do tackle box I'm I used to fish but I have not fished in almost like 15 years and I think that is something where I'm like I really got to figure out how to get a tackle box in there so yeah if you can connect me with uh, someone who has a tackle box or someone who has like a or an item that can sort of fit uh, but it's like talks about fishing or hunting or something like that I think I really love that very cool oh and here we okay what does Thomas think of Blucifer 
which we call <laughs> Mustang, not Lucifer. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, 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 I like it because it's like it's art that gets people talking. And it's one of those things where it's kind of like the art when you go to when you go to a public art space and you see art and you don't even notice it or you notice it, but you just don't really care about it. It's sort of like for me as an artist that hurts uh, if I were to be that if I were that artist and make that piece of work, uh, but to have artwork that sort of gets people energized and excited and like now there's there's entire stories about Lucifer, you know, there's entire sort of programs and you know television shows that sort of reference you know the the piece of work and for me it's kind of like you know that's that's kind of like having your artistic expression out there but having people care enough to say something about it and like actually you know comment on it and like expand on it and everything and you know for me it, it's I, I i definitely like it so you know i i i want to see blucifer stay and have more people people talk about it and the tunnels underneath DIA. <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk about those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last, last comment, which was yeah. great. We have an employee that talked about, would you be interested in documenting your process as you create this piece so that later we can have students explore this? We're creating a new center um, of equity and excellence in aviation, and it would be really great to be able to feature you as part of this um, project that we're doing and, you know, maybe be able to share this with this next generation of students. Of course, yeah. I mean, I'd love to sort of um, be a part of that. And really, it's all about, for me, if you follow me on Instagram, it's detour303. And on there, every Tuesday, I do art tips. And I've been doing that for the past seven years straight. Never missed a Tuesday, not even for my birthday or holidays or Christmas. So I'm all about educating and showing behind the scenes and sharing as much experience as possible. So I will be documenting all of this. I even doc like I have a ton of documentation from the actual RFQ and sort of putting to putting together the proposal and putting together the samples, things like that. So and I'm going to also document collecting luggage because I have to sort of travel now to all different parts of Colorado to collect luggage. So I'll be documenting that. So it's going to be a lot of content, a lot of information, and I'd love to share that um, with you as well. And I'd love to be a part of that program as well. Nice. Well, I think that wraps up our session today. I want to thank everyone for participating. Thomas, thank you. We're so grateful that you're sharing your talent here with us at the airport. Can't wait for your piece. And then I will say also just to the group, we're going to do these with the other three artists that have been selected as well. So you'll have another chance to participate and learn more about some of the other pieces coming to the airport around the same time. So it's going to be a big year, 2024, 2025. Um, in particular, a big year for art at Den. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thomas, any final words? Uh, no, just thank you for having me. I hope uh, the people listening and watch the presentation are excited about this piece and want to donate and want to connect me with individuals that, you know, they, they want to see their stories told, their communities uh, expressed in this art piece as well. So definitely follow that link. Um, and, and for the form to, to, to donate, um, you can also reach me at my website, www.imdetour.com uh, and hit that contact uh, section to sort of let me know more about some of the communities you want to see um, sort of represented in the piece as well. So I'm an open book. Um, I will be documenting uh, the piece and showcasing some of the behind the scenes as well because you know it's a public art piece and but I also want to make sure it's sort of like a public process and open process when it comes to actual fabrication and you know what what uh, is what happens when you know you're trying to put all this stuff together so that you feel like you're connected uh, with the work at the end of the day. So uh, yeah, I just want to thank you and you know the rest of DIA and uh, the community for actually you know supporting uh, this project and supporting the public art. So yeah, if you're out there and you're trying to figure out you know what you can do is like definitely support as much public art as possible because you know going to you know any public space and seeing just muted colors and you know bland stuff is you know that that's that's definitely not not, uh, not fun at all. So supporting your local artists and supporting these programs that sort of fund uh, the lo local artists and sort of like advocate for the local artists is something that I'm always uh, an advocate for.
Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Detour, and thanks everyone for attending. Awesome.